Obesity plays a central role in the management of reflux disease and choosing our treatment options for the patient. We know that obesity in this country has increased in prevalence just like reflux disease is and certainly obesity has a lot to do with the development of reflux. Uh, we know that patients who reach a point of obesity called morbid obesity where their BMI or body mass index exceeds 40, we know that most of them are going to have reflux whether they ever had it or not before that. So evaluating a patient and looking at their weight and uh, measures of obesity is important to us. We always will emphasize weight management or reduction as part of the initial lifestyle management to help reduce the severity of reflux disease. And key to that are eating habits, meaning portion control and the things that the patient eats. So we want to reduce total caloric intake, we want to reduce gastric distension, we want to see weight reduction, simply because excess weight presses on the stomach and makes regurgitation more likely. The fact is, though, that sometimes obesity gets in the way of how we might be able to manage a patient's reflux. BMI is a measure of weight and height combined into an index that lets us compare one patient to another and look closely at what diseases are more likely to occur. Once a BMI hits 35, and there's some nice calculators on our website that patients can go to, but once their BMI hits 35, then we have significant concern there as to whether or not our traditional operative interventions such as fundoplication or the LINX device are going to give the patient the kind of control they need. For that matter, at that point, their reflux may be just another symptom of their obesity like sleep apnea, high blood pressure, uh, osteoarthritis, diabetes, all of those things can be related to the obesity and then it becomes more important not to treat the reflux, which itself is another symptom, but to treat the obesity and that's where we will frequently refer patients for a bariatric consultation, simply because ethically the right thing to do for that patient is not to manage that one symptom with an operation that may fail them and leave their diabetes and sleep apnea ignored, but rather to look more closely at a solution that may manage their weight effectively and maybe even cure their diabetes, reduce their hypertension, reduce their risk of complications related to those comorbidities. So we frequently will try to screen patients very early in the process and redirect them to some of our bariatric associates who are well trained in the management of bariatric surgery, the evaluation, not only surgical options, but some of the non-surgical options as well. Obviously, if we could get any patient to have significant, dramatic, long-lasting weight loss without surgery, that's ideal. From a practical standpoint, we know that that's not going to happen and we need to have something else that we can offer our patients.